Hello, gang. Um, I'm here, kind of at like a weird angle. Um, I cut my hair. It's short and black now, um, but I want to feel safe, so I'm in my my blanket hoodie. And I'm here to talk about Terrifier Three, and I'm really hoping that the audio isn't fucked up because I originally was gonna try to set my camera up so it was rec actually recording, like as like I was gonna USB it to my computer instead of using my USB webcam and it just, it wasn't working. So I'm still recording recording the visuals through my actual camera and the audio through my microphone into my computer. It's a fucking wiring mess. Anyways, um, I'm here to talk about Terrifier 3 because I watched it. My first Terrifier in theaters. Um, Terrifier 2, I had nobody to see it with, so I... It was around this time that everything was coming on, like, digital at the same time, so I just bought it on Amazon. Um, but yes, I was here when Terrifier 2 came out, but this was my first Terrifier in theaters, and it didn't, it did not disappoint, I cannot lie. Um, so, I have alcohol, I have vodka mixed with black cherry sparkling ice. Not a gross straw, it's a bamboo straw. Okay, we're sustainable here. Um, but I have all my notes, so we're gonna talk. First things first, this is gonna have spoilers in it, obviously. Hello, um, I'm editing right now. Um, also, spoiler for one specific death scene in Maxine. Um, it's a very short death scene, and I've literally seen it as a meme on Twitter. Um, but I do reference it. Sorry. It's a random death. It's like some random guy. It doesn't even matter, but I just want to make sure I cover all my bases. Um, the alternative title for this video was I Watched Terrify 3 So You Don't Have To. I think I did a video like this about... It was either a Serbian film or Sallow. I want to say it was Sallow. I also, I remember making a video about Midori. It didn't have that title though. It was something else. No, actually, I think Midori was the video that had that title. And then my Sallow video was just like processing Sallow. But I made that video when I was like 16. So I should honestly probably like retract my statements. Um, because my opinions have probably changed on that movie a little bit. Anyways, um, so we're going to talk about Terrify 3 is kind of ranty um okay so a lot of criticism there's two main big criticisms that people have about this movie slash this series the first main one that i saw for this movie specifically was um that in this movie hold on i have to adjust my legs because i don't feel secure put my knee down um in this movie art the clown does kill children that does happen he does kill a couple kids um i will say however so the opening sequence so the daughter goes downstairs because she hears santa she's looking for him it's it's art the clown so he heads upstairs and he kills her brother now the way that he does this is um so you're seeing the kill from the child's point of view and she is at the bottom of the stairs like near the christmas tree he goes up the stairs, he closes the door, and then he kills the brother. So it's it's a very violent kill. He's got like an axe and you hear the thumping, but you don't really see the process of the child dying. Then it, um, you know, he goes to the parents' bedroom and he kills them and it's very graphic. Um, and then well, he kills the dad and he, he gets the mom. The mom exits runs to go check on her children, opens the door, and sees the dead body. You do see the kid's dead body, um, but I mean, at that point, you can barely even recognize, like, you can't see a face, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like a torso with some, like, organs popping out of it. Um, so, for me, it wasn't that big of a deal, personally. Um, you don't see him kill the daughter, the mom runs down the stairs and then he kills the mom and the girl hides he finds the girl but you don't see like an on-screen kill 
of her. So I don't know if she's gonna like come into the the next movie. I don't really know. Um, but you don't see her die. After this kill, Sienna, after the events, is getting out of the mental hospital. She's being picked up by her uncle to stay with her aunt and her um, cousin. They live like it's a bit of a drive, but I'm guessing it's like within like a couple hours, like within the state. Um, as Jonathan, who is currently enrolled in college. Um, so that's where we're at. Another kill that involves children is Sienna is with her niece and is going to the mall. And um, she sees out the clown, but she thinks she's hallucinating. She freaks out. They leave. Um, after they leave... Art the Clown, dressed up as Santa, pretends to be Santa, and he's handing out presents to all these kids. This one bothered me more than the um, like the opening kill with the kid, just because it felt more real to me personally, and one of the presents is a bomb. So the kid opens it, and the bomb goes off. Um, you don't really, like... I think it's a close-up of him, like, opening it, and there's kind of, like, an explosion, and it pans out, but then it pans back in, and you do see, like, dead bodies scattered, and, like, they are wearing the same clothes as some of the kids that you see in the previous scene. Those were the two main, like, kid kills. Um, while we're on this topic, so many fucking trigger, warning, trigger warnings in this movie, it's crazy um but trigger warning for dead kids um also trigger warning for um suicide there is a scene where um so in the movie art the clown comes back with vicky to basically like terrorize sienna and um there is a scene where vicky takes a broken piece of glass and like slits her wrist open and it is very graphic like she 13 reasons why is herself in a bathtub um very graphic i did so i was wearing a hat um i was wearing like a garfield baseball cap and i did i uh i did tilt my hat down because no nah man um the thing with the terrifying movies that's so interesting to me is that i have seen garbage like, I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I've seen Slaughtered Vomit Dolls, I've seen Cannibal Holocaust, I've seen a Serbian film, I've seen Sallow, I've seen, uh, fucking August Underground, I've seen where the, I've seen all of that shit. And while Terrifier 3, it's kind of like a roller coaster of a movie, it's very fun. Because the gore is so, like, there's such a big budget, they can really do whatever they want. So there's a lot of scenes in this movie that are just so, like, off the wall. Like, it didn't even really bother me because, like, the scene where he's, like, chopping up the dad. I was just kind of like, hey, that's kind of goofy. Um, however, the scene where Vicky is cutting herself did borrow, bother me um, because of how big the budget is. Um, I think it, 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 like, it looks really HD and, like, really, like, and, I mean, people criticize, like, the blood not, for not looking real, like, all that kind of stuff, but, like, it looked pretty fucking real to me when she started slicing it up, so I, you know, whatever. Um, also, trigger warning for dead animals, um, trigger warning for dead animals, um, so Art the Clown is staying in this, like, abandoned house. Um, men do come into the house at some point, and he does kill them. Um, but he's staying at this house. It kind of reminded me of, um, the house in It on, um, like, the abandoned house that Pennywise lives in. It made me think of that. Um, except for Art the Clown is, he's in the attic, not the basement. And they kind of do this really fun scene where, um, in Black Christmas, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming they were alluding to that on purpose because it is kind of like a Christmas movie, um, but in Black Christmas, they, um, they put a body in a rocking chair, and it, like, it rocks, um, so when the guy is, like, they're, they're tearing down the house, they're, like, contractors, 
he goes upstairs he sees a rocking chair and he sees like a clown puppet in it and it's rocking back and he's like whoa you better not be fucking real like he's you know kind of doing that and then art the clown kills him um but the shot of him like in the window in the rocking chair while the rocking chair is rocking made me think of black christmas um which you know props i fucking love black christmas um but there are some rats and some critters in the house that art the clown um does use uh from what it looked like he was taking dry ice and like spraying it and freezing things and he does freeze rats and then like smack them um and you do see it he also uses the rats to torture other people he's he's basically testing it at first because he does um freeze a man and like break all of his bones um, but he does also, like, use the rats to torture a woman later in the movie, um, which I'm going to talk about. Okay, got all the other trigger warnings out of the way. Now I'm going to talk about the sexism. Previously, ooh, previously in these films, um, the director, whose name I don't remember, sorry, I'm not prepared, um, but the director has been accused of uh, sexism, and I do think that it is impossible to deny that, um, lots of horror movies are, like, inherently sexist, um, especially when you, like, look back at, like, the 70s, and you talk about, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and, like, all that kind of stuff, women typically have longer on-screen deaths, and they also are typically punished for, like, behaving, like, provocatively, or, like, a certain way, so, horror although i love it does definitely have a sexism issue and that's kind of just like around the board um not as much anymore but like when you go to like watch old horror movies like it, it's gonna happen like friday the 13th all that shit women are going to be punished for having sex so yeah um last terrifier the biggest scene was um the one like the 10 minute long on-screen kill where he like scalps that girl and then like pours like fucking bleach and salt on her head like that was like the big scene um and then i think in terrifier one at least for me the big scene is the one where he hangs the girl upside down and he chops her horizontally um so i thought it was really interesting I think that the director really did see that people were like, hey, your movie is kind of sexist, which is why he kind of, like, turned it around and made, like, the big on-screen kill a man in this movie. Um, so, I'm going to talk about that. Because it was one of my favorite parts. Um, Jonathan has a roommate. I don't remember the roommate's name. He's a man. And the man has a girlfriend named Mia. I remember her name because I fucking hated her guts. Um, she's one of those, like, I love true crime. I can't even lie. I actively partake in true crime. I, I read books. I, I do the, you know, I do some of the podcasts, not all of them, because a lot of them are really, like, they make me cringe. Um, but, like, the more, like, respectful ones... I listen to those. I really like dreading, um, complete side tangent. Anyways, um, Mia is a true crime enthusiast. Think, um, my favorite murder type beat. Um, and she has a true crime podcast where they uh, make conspiracy theories about, um, whether or not victims are actually the killers shit like that um it's very victim blamey um it's kind of all around garbage it's like the scum of the true crime community and i know it exists because i've seen it um so when she kind of like there's a scene where um they're they're having sex there's no female nudity in this movie though i will say everything is like bras anyways so they're they're hooking up and Jonathan comes home, back to his dorm, 
and she immediately, she's like, oh my God, I know everything about what happened to you and your sister. I would love to interview on your, po- I'd love to interview you on my podcast. And he kind of is like, yeah, and, like he brushes her off. Um, there is a scene where Sienna, who's already very frazzled, um, it's, it's after she thinks that she hallucinates seeing him at the mall, but she actually did see him. Or she goes to the college just to kind of be like, hey, like, like, I need help. Um, so she's already, like, frazzled. And this bitch stops Sienna and is, like, asking her all these really invasive questions and, like, all this shit. And Sienna, like, freaks out and, like, snaps at her. Um, because she's completely, like, like, Sienna's, like, visibly, like, shaking and very upset. And Mia kind of comes in and is like, you know, how are you coping? Oh my god how was that how was it seeing your family get murdered like kind of like just very tone deaf um and sienna like freaks out and yells at her um i do think so one of the theories that mia was talking about on her podcast was that um sienna was actually responsible for the murders and i do think that they're going to touch on this again in the next movie because when sienna freaks out she kind of like like she slams the table like she she like fucking throws shit and they're in a public place so everybody sees it happen i think that this is going to fuel the people on the internet who believe that sienna is responsible anyways um so sienna leaves and mia and the boyfriend the roommate go back to the the dorm and she she says something about how like I don't understand why she freaked out like that. It was, like, five years ago. It shouldn't even matter. And the boyfriend's kind of like, you need to stop. Like, the boyfriend is, like, shutting her down. Um, and she says something along the lines of, like, oh, I just, I want to know what it's like to, to look evil in its eyes. Like, I want to know, like, how does that feel? And she's, like, being all, like, stupid and, like, melodramatic about it. So she goes to have sex with him, and they go to the shower, and Art the Clown has heard the whole conversation. He's in the hallway. So he kind of like, it's it's very comedic the way that it happens, which is I didn't really get the Art the Clown hype previously, but this movie did kind of, I feel like he's kind of like a drag queen in a way with the way that he moves and the way that like his facial expression, he just reminds me of a drag queen. Anyways, because at one point the boyfriend insinuates that she wants to fuck him that she's like one of those girls and she's like no like i don't want to fuck him and you he he's in the, <laughs> you see him like eavesdropping and he's like like <laughs> it's just funny um and that's when she says the line she's like i just want to know what it's like to look evil in the eyes anyways so they go to the showers and art obliterates the boyfriend in like one of the one of the scenes that genuinely genuinely made me squirm is he um he gets him like he's got a chainsaw he gets him like in the kneecap and the guy tries to run but they're in the showers and it's wet so when he runs his like his bones like break and they go like and then he hits the ground and then he's like trying to crawl away and in like a little kind of like almost like a little callback to the first movie he like he he starts at the guy's feet and he cuts him to the top like horizontally horizontally because he's laying on his side but vertically vertically because he's going up technically um balls to head basically and you see the balls by the way which i thought was crazy um because previously in horror it's always boobs like you always see boobs and this year, specifically, there have been two different m- mainstream movies that I have watched that have came out in 2024 where I have seen balls on a screen and they have been destroyed. A spoiler for um, Maxine, but that movie also has some of these balls get fucked up. So... I was already, and I had seen that, like, that right before watching Terrifier 3, I had just watched Maxine because they put it on HBO. 
And I was like, holy fucking shit, this is like the year of fucking cock and ball torture. I'm, I'm here for it. I think, keep the trend going. Um, it's just, it's, it's a nice change of pace. Usually you see women get mutilated. <laughs> you do. So, I don't know, it just kind of cracked me up. It was worth noting. Anyways, uh, when he kills Mia, he, he, like, he makes it so she can't move. I don't remember, I think he, like, gets her in the spine. And then he, like, <laughs> he's wearing sunglasses with, like, Christmas trees on it, which kind of add to it. And he takes them off. And then he looks her in the eyes. And then he puts them on her. <laughs> and then he kills her. Um, but it just, I don't know, it cracked me up. Her entire character was like, holy shit. Because I fucking hate people like that. Um, they did kind of make... I think that the shower death was supposed to be, like, the big, like, the big death in the film. However, the one that really bothered me more than any of the other, more than any death in any terrifier movie is my stomach just gurgled um the, the scene with the aunt art the clown kills the uncle after he kills so the uncle is actively picking jonathan up so that jonathan jonathan can come with him back to the house and that is when um mia and the boyfriend die we we don't see anything um but when Sienna's sleeping because they like gave her sleeping pills because she was freaking the fuck out um when she wakes up the uncle's body is there <laughs> so I mean the uncle's dead um and but and then Sienna is tied up on a chair sitting across from her aunt and there is a head in the middle it's like a skull in the middle Art the Clown I guess Vicky technically you know Vicky says it um, says that it is Denise, whose name I do not remember, um, says that it's Denise, and then Art the Clown basically shoves a, a, like a, like a PVC pipe, like Hannibal style, if you've seen NBC's Hannibal, down her throat, but it's fucking huge, right? So it's like, it's ripping her skin. He shoves it down her throat. And when he brings the rat in, when he brings the head in, it's covered in rats. So he takes the rats and he shoves them down the pipe. And then he has like a like a, a blowtorch. Like the ones that you cook with. He's got a blowtorch. And he's heating it up so that the rats scurry down her throat. That was my my least favorite terror kill. No. <laughs> I really didn't like that one. Um, and I don't know if it's because, like, technically, like, that was a thing that people did. Not with the, like, the throat stuff, but, like, it was a medieval torture technique where they would, like, tie you up and they would put, like, a cage of rats on your stomach and then they would, like, heat it up so that the rats would bury th burrow through you and, like, eat your, you know, they'd have to eat their way through you, um, so they would eat you alive. Um... I don't know if it's, like, knowing that, like, that was, like, inspired by, like, a real torture method. Um, I think it's because there were, like, animals involved, and I don't like animal stuff. Like, I have pretty, I have really good, like, cognitive dissonance when it comes to, like, movies like this. Watching little rats, like, skitter around. I don't know. It freaks me out. Like, that's not an actor. That's a rat. <laughs> what is he doing here? Um... Yeah, that was the one that really bothered me. Um, and then they kind of, so after that happens, she dies. Um, but then it is, so not only is she dying in this horrible way, but she's dying thinking that her daughter is dead. Um, and then it kind of like, Vicky's like, that's not your niece, that's your brother. I don't know if I believe that. I'll keep it real. Art the Clown killed like at least 20 people in that movie. And it's a skull. It could be anybody. I don't trust that man at all. Um, and he's got the glasses. Jonathan's glasses. But the thing is, is that the last scene that we see, Jonathan is taking his glasses off and setting them on his bed. I don't know. I kind of still think he's alive. 
Um, that's my theory. Um, but I also love Jonathan. I, I fucking love that dude. Um, I follow him on Twitter. I just think he's funny. I really like Final Boys. They don't get as much love as Final Girls. I mean, Sienna, like, the, she's the star of the show, let's be real. Um, but I like a good Final Boy. So, if he's actually dead, I'm gonna be a little bit sad. Because there's not a lot of those. And he technically was one. Anyways, the plot of these movies is not great. But nobody's here for the plot. Um, I will say the plot kind of, like, is good enough that, like, like, they're not gonna win any fucking awards, but it's entertaining. Um, I will say I don't really care for the religion stuff. Um, I did think it was very interesting. So in Terror of Error 2, Sienna is, like, an angel, right? And she's, like, fighting demons. I thought it was really cool that in Terror of Error 3, she, like, has, um, the crown of thorns on her head. And they literally open up, like, a hole to hell. I'm not a big, like, religion person. I don't love it when horror movies kind of use religion as, like, a cop-out. I think it's kind of boring. Um, I kind of think that she should be Jesus, though, in, like, a really weird way. Um, make Sienna Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think it would be good. I think it would add to it. Um... That's what they're telling me. That's what I'm reading. I feel like, like, if I knew more about the Bible, there is probably something, like, some biblical, like, hold on. Yeah. God's sword of judgment. She has a fucking sword. <laughs> All I'm saying... I don't know enough about the Bible to, like, really make a proper theory, but I think I'm putting some pieces together. Um, I love Sienna. She is one of my favorite final girls. Um, I think she's fucking killing it in, like, the final girl world. Um, I follow that actress on Twitter. Um, I think she's fucking awesome. Um, so I wrote a little thing about Sienna. Um, so I love her, like, her personality, but I also love her, like, her design, slash, like, her look. I love the, um, when she's dressed as a superhero that her dad made, and she's in, like, the wings and everything. I think that's so cool. It's such an interesting design topic. Such an interesting design concept. Um, I feel like a lot of the, a lot of final girls are kind of boring. I won't lie. So having, like, this final girl with this, like, really elaborate... Like, it, it gives the cosplayers something to get really pumped for. So I think that's great. Um, I feel like a lot of the time, like, the villain is male, the hero is female. The villain gets, like, this crazy, like... Like, let's say Scream, right? The villain's, you know, costume is very, like, recognizable. It's, like, an actual costume. But, like, if you just kind of go with Sidney Prescott, that's, like bangs in a sweater so I thought it was cool that it's like a female character that is recognizable and is interesting to cosplay as I also really liked her struggle with PTSD I thought it was very well done that they put instead of her being haunt I mean she is haunted as haunted by Art the Clown um, but she's also haunted by her friends that died. And they honestly terrorize her more than Art the Clown does in terms of hallucinations. Um, because she feels so guilty about it. I also, Mia, which is the girlfriend, um, she literally, like, victim blames. Like, it's not even, like, questionable she does it to Sienna. Um, she also treats Sienna like she's crazy for, um standing up for herself. I like that she's not over-sexualized. Um, I do remember hearing that the director didn't want anything like, any like SA kind of stuff in the movies. So I'm very glad that that hasn't happened. Um, because that is like a big turnoff in horror movies for me, is uh, watching people get sexually assaulted. I mean, Arthur Clown definitely tortures people. Like, he cuts that dude in half, but it's not, you know, 
there's no like sexual gratification from it i don't think i think he's just a fucking freak i just i don't know i think she's genuinely a very strong final girl and um i'm very empathetic towards her i like the way that they made her like relationships with the different characters um and i also think that she's very smart which you don't really see a lot in horror movies and now you see it more than before but i don't know sienna is kind of like an all-around just good final girl in my opinion um one could probably argue that she's kind of a mary sue but um i don't really give a fuck so i like her i think she's cool yeah those are my main thoughts on terrifier 3. i've been recording for 35 minutes so i'm gonna head out i hope you have a nice day and goodbye